It's hard to believe, but the Galaxy S8 series is already 7 years old. While official software support ended with Android 9 Pie, the story doesn't have to end there. If you've caught my previous videos on the Galaxy S9 and S10 running the latest One UI, you're probably familiar with how we brought One UI 6 to those devices. Well, now in this video, I'm going to show you how to take your Galaxy S8, Galaxy S8 Plus, and Galaxy Note 8 to the next level by installing the Android 14 based One UI update. However, the real heroes here are the brilliant developers behind these custom ROMs. Their dedication is incredible, breathing new life into these iconic devices. Huge shout out to them for making this possible. With this custom ROM called ExoROM 1 UI 6.1, you can transform your older Galaxy device into something that feels brand new. It brings over a bunch of features from Samsung's latest phones, like the Galaxy S21 and S22 series. You'll get the latest One UI 6.1 look including enhanced customization options, lock screen widgets, stylish always on display modes, and even good lock features like advanced theming and the amazing circle to search feature. And you might even get a taste of Samsung's AI features, although those may or may not work. So in this video, I'm giving you both a hands-on review and a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to install this ROM on the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, and Note 8. I'll be using the Galaxy S8 Exynos version for the demo. But don't worry, these steps apply to the S8 Plus and Note 8 too. And yeah, just ignore the black dots on my device's screen. They may be an eyesore, but they don't mess with its performance. And that's what really matters, right? Now, before you rush into installing this ROM, there are a few important things to consider. While it brings a lot of exciting features from the Galaxy S21's One UI 6.1, it's not without its quirks. This ROM is kind of a double-edged sword, so you need to carefully weigh the pros and cons before deciding if it's something you want to use as your daily driver. First off, while you'll get access to the latest One UI 6.1 features, some essential functions are going to take a hit. For starters, you'll lose iris scanning, face unlock, and the beloved Samsung stock camera. And although I haven't encountered these issues myself, some users have reported problems like dual SIM not working or the hotspot feature being disabled. That said, performance is generally good, possibly even a little snappier, thanks to the refined animations in One UI 6.1. Gaming performance, it's solid, not mind-blowingly better than stock, but it's at least on par or slightly improved. I've compiled a list of all the known bugs in the video description, so definitely check that out before flashing. Just be ready for a few bumps along the road. On the bright side, this build handles daily tasks really well. Social media apps like Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube run smoothly with no hiccups. Video and audio playback including HDR content also works perfectly fine too. Now, you might be wondering how the camera quality is without the Samsung stock camera. To be honest, it's not great mostly a hit or miss. While it's not terrible for basic shots, it lacks the optimization of the native app, especially for features like autofocus, HDR, and night mode. You may notice slower shutter speeds and less detail in photos. For better performance, I suggest finding a stable Google camera version to flash. Just remember, performance can vary depending on your specific phone model and your tolerance for a few bugs here and there. So I'm here to walk you through everything you need to know to get this ROM up and running on your Galaxy device. After that, the choice is yours. And hey, quick disclaimer before we jump in. Make sure to carefully follow all the instructions provided in this video or by the developer. If something goes wrong, there's a risk of breaking your device. So proceed only if you're confident in what you're doing. To make things easier, I've added chapters in the description so you can jump directly to any specific section that you're interested in. Now before we get started, here's a quick heads up. I've included links for both ROMs, one ported from the Galaxy S22 Ultra and one from the Galaxy S21 Ultra. The installation method for both is exactly the same and I'll be showing you that process. Which ROM you decide to go with? totally up to you. Just remember, neither of these ROMs will get future support, so it's just a matter of seeing which works best for you. First things first, back up everything. You lose all your data and apps during this process, so make sure it's all safe before we move on. Once that's done, check out the description of this video for the download links to grab the ROM file. For the other necessary files, visit the website I've provided, download them, and keep everything in a folder for easy access. Also, don't forget to install Samsung drivers on your PC so it can properly detect your phone. Now, grab your phone and open settings. Head to About Phone, scroll to Software Information, and tap Build number 7 times to unlock Developer Options. Once that's done, go back, open Developer Options, and look for OEM Unlocking. Turn that on. Since my phone's bootloader is already unlocked, it's not shown here, but it is unlocked, which means we're ready to proceed to the next step. 
all right before we go any further make sure your device is fully charged you don't want it powering down mid process first power off your device and we'll boot it into recovery mode by pressing the bixby power and volume down buttons all at the same time hold them until the download mode screen pops up next grab your data cable and plug your phone into the computer odin should detect your device and you'll see confirmation on the screen meaning we're ready to flash the recovery once you're in download mode set your phone down for a moment and focus on your laptop open up the odin software when it's loaded you'll see blue block showing some text like this which means your phone has a good connection with the laptop great now head over to options and make sure you uncheck auto restart we don't want the phone rebooting just yet after that click a p and select the correct file for your device if you're using the standard galaxy s8 grab the s8 file for the s8 plus select that one and if you've got a note 8 make sure to choose the right file for your model now click start and the flashing process will begin it should take just a few seconds and when it's done you'll see a pass message hit exit and that's it for the TWR P recovery installation. You can go ahead and unplug your device now if you want. Next, we're going to boot into the TWR P recovery we just installed. To do that, hold the power, Bixby and volume up buttons simultaneously. Keep holding them until the TWR P screen appears. Once you're in, swipe right to enter the TWR P recovery menu. Take a minute to get familiar with the TWR P interface. It's like a mini operating system for your phone with tools and options to help manage your device. Now let's move on. First, go to wipe, check all of these boxes which I have selected and then swipe right to wipe your device. This will clear everything so we can install the ROM cleanly. All right, now that we've wiped the device, it's time to move on to copying those files you downloaded from the description. First, reconnect your phone to your computer and start by copying the repetitioner file to your phone's internal storage. Once that's done, grab your phone and, in recovery, navigate to the install option. Find the file you just copied, tap on it and swipe right to flash it. Now, this part can take a little time, so just be patient. Staying calm is key here. Rushing or panicking might cause a misstep, and trust me, you don't want that. Once the process completes, if your phone reboots, let it reboot. And while you're waiting, if you're liking this content, consider subscribing to my channel. I am trying hard to hit that 10k subscribers mark and having you join my community would mean a lot to me. Thank you. Once the repetitioner has been successfully flashed, go back to your laptop and copy the cleaner file over to your phone's storage. After it's copied, return to recovery on your phone, select install and locate the cleaner file. Swipe right to flash it and wait for it to finish. After the cleaner file flashes, your phone will automatically reboot into recovery mode again. Now it's time to copy the actual ROM file. But if for some reason you can't see your phone's storage on your laptop, or if the install folder looks empty, don't panic. Just go back to recovery, navigate to wipe and select format data. Type yes and swipe right to confirm. Once that's done, head back and reboot into recovery mode once more. Great job so far. Once TWRP recovery boots up, you'll be able to access your phone's storage again. Now, it's time to copy the ROM file to your phone's internal storage. Choose any preferred location. I'm using this specific ROM, but feel free to select whichever version you like. Keep in mind that the copying process might take a bit of time, so just sit tight. After the file has been copied, pick up your phone and navigate to the install option in TWRP. Select the ROM file you just transferred and swipe right to flash it. You'll be greeted by the installation wizard. Click next to move forward. At this point, you'll need to choose your preferred installation method. You have a couple of options here. Installation tuner or personalized install gives you more control, letting you fine tune what gets installed and how. If you'd rather keep things simple, go for the express install option, which takes care of everything automatically. Next, you'll be presented with a few warnings about potential bugs. Go through them carefully and when you're ready, Press next again. On the following page, you'll need to accept the agreement and tap next once more. Finally, click install and wait for the process to finish. This step can take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. So be patient and let the ROM install. At the end of this process, you'll see an exit option. Go ahead and tap on that to return to the main menu. From there, simply select reboot and then choose system to restart your device. 
Now you'll need to give your phone around 5 to 10 minutes to boot up and reach the welcome screen. However, if it takes longer than 20 minutes or you encounter a boot loop, don't worry. You can easily return to recovery by holding down the volume up, Bixby and power buttons simultaneously. Once you're back in recovery, go to wipe, then select advanced wipe. Choose data and tap on repair or change file system. Now switch the file system to F2FS. Once that's completed, go back to the main menu and reboot the system. This time, you should successfully reach the welcome screen. After you've landed on the welcome screen, simply go through the standard setup process like you would with any new phone. Congratulations, you've successfully updated your Galaxy S8, S8 Plus or Note 8 to Android 14. Once you've used the phone for a bit, if you have a good experience, feel free to drop by the comments section and let others know your thoughts on the ROM's performance, pros and cons. Your feedback can really help other users make an informed decision. As for me, I won't be running this ROM long term because it's a bit too buggy for my needs. However, I'll be posting more ROM reviews and tutorials starting this week for the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus and Note 8. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on those updates.